We sort through a load of plastic every week. And it's such a pain when we get a piece of plastic that has no marking on it to tell us whether we can recycle it or not. So to get around that, we're gonna show you a few different ways to work out what it is. This video is sponsored by MyHeritage. So to give you a bit of a top level overview, if you picked up any piece of plastic in the world, it could be classified into one of three categories. So you've got thermoplastics, thermosets, and elastomers. Elastomers are plastic with some sort of elasticity to them. So think about rubbers, and these can be natural or synthetic. Thermosets, as the name implies, can't be remolded once they're set. So they work well for things like resins and electrical fittings. You can spot a thermoset as when you scratch it, it produces this plastic dust. So thermoplastics are things that can be reheated and reshaped and therefore recycled into new objects. And these are always categorized with a little recycling symbol with the numbers one to seven inside. And like thermosets, when you scratch these, no dust will be produced, it will just leave the cut line. So, seeing as we're all about trying to reduce as much plastic from going to the landfill as possible, we're going to focus on thermoplastics because these are the ones that we can work with. To be able to do this effectively, we need to have a way of separating those thermoplastics into their separate types. Clean and separated plastic can be turned into products which can be recycled over and over again. If you mix plastic types, they will inevitably always end up going to landfill. So, as the name of the video suggests, we're going to show you a number of different ways that you can identify unmarked plastic. So a good first point of call is actually to take a look at the plastic you're using and see if it has a mark on it. So what you're looking for is a small triangle with a number inside, and this is called a resin code. And depending on the number inside the triangle, that tells you what type of plastic you're looking at. But there are some drawbacks to this, one being the fact that it's not actually a requirement for brands to put resin codes on the plastic they use. Uh, this particular chocolate manufacturer, for example, very good at making chocolate, not so good at putting their resin codes on their lids. It's also a system that's only been in place for 35 years, so any plastic that's before that won't have a resin code on it, so that's not gonna help either. It me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and one of the biggest issues that isn't specific to this type of identifying plastic, but just plastic resin codes in general, number seven is actually classed as other, which means that it's not telling you a specific type of plastic, it could be loads of different types of plastic, but they're not one of the first six plastics. So for the methods that we've got, we're gonna show you how you can separate one to six. Realistically, that's all you actually need for if you're doing similar processes to us anyway, because in our workshop, we only use twos, fours, and fives, because they're the ones that can be sort of safely recycled at home or in a workshop. Um, if you wanna know more about sort of the safety aspects of recycling, we've got a whole video for that, we'll pop that description in the cards so if you want to know more about that take a look and these other ways that we're going to show you are options you can use when you have plastic with no numbers on them and it can help kind of separate them and work out what it is you're actually trying to work with let's do it So we're going to try a float test and what this means is that you are going to use some sort of liquid in this case it's going to be water first and you've got to find something that has a density in between the density of two different types of plastic and that way some plastic will float some will sink and you'll be able to separate them from each other so in here we have a mixture of all of the first six types of plastic and because water has a density of one all of the plastics with a density lower than that will float to the top and the rest will sink to the bottom A couple of things to note, it's good to do more than just one or two bits because occasionally either the surface tension of the water might make things seem like they're floating when really they actually would sink. Um, so you, we tend to do a handful of each type of plastic and that way you can find out a pretty accurate representation. So with the water float test, we've managed to separate out the three plastics that we like to use in our workshop. Now we need to separate those out further so we can find out which one's which. So instead of water, this time we're using good old fashioned vegetable oil. And in theory, the polypropylene should float to the top. Just to note, we have swapped over to shred rather than lids, just because we did actually try this a second ago and all the lids ended up getting stuck inside each other and weighing each other down. So shred makes things easier.
Right, so the polypropylene has risen to the top and the other two are on the bottom. It's worth mentioning that we usually use a much smaller vessel rather than this big one with as much oil as this. This is just for demonstration purposes, but this way you can choose a few of the little chips off the plastic you're trying to test and you don't have to use nearly as much oil. Right, before we go and delve even deeper into the identity of this plastic, we're going to take a minute just to find out a bit more about our own. So this leads us onto the wonderful sponsor of this video, MyHeritage. We're super excited to partner up with MyHeritage and we were even more so when we received this little box in the post. So they're a leading global family history and DNA service and we were just ridiculously excited at the idea of finding out where we came from and any potential new relatives. The instructions are super easy to follow. All we had to do was a quick cheek swab, pop it in a vial and send it back to them. Right, so after about three or four weeks, we got the results back. I've left them on my phone, unopened until this very moment. Very exciting. It's very, it's genuinely very exciting. Should we watch it? Third. Right, let's see who we are. 74.6% English. Okay, three quarters. Okay. 22.7% Irish, Irish, Scottish, Scottish and Welsh. Welsh. There's, only, there's a little bit left. Wells. Ooh. Ha <laughs> ha! 2.7% Scandinavian. The Viking. We there are basically pure Vikings. That's right, I am. <laughs> That's cool, I'm, I'm happy with that. I really like that. Fortunately, we're brothers, so actually we only had to do one test, which yes. she did. It might come up in the relative section saying that we're third cousins. Cousins make. Cousins make. <laughs> <laughs> Even had some matches come through. New relatives. So, new relatives. We've got parents, third cousin. Quite a lot of pets. We've got about a thousand cousins, it turns out. Cousins make. Could be. There's, yeah. There's our Uncle Jeff on there. Hey, Uncle Jeff. Uncle Jeff. Hi. Hey, Uncle Jeff. <laughs> it's crazy how ridiculously simple that was. That was just, what, two cheek swabs. And then, boom, look, all these... 8,000 family members. Nice little overview here. Ethnicity estimate. Good to see the information in a nice one place. I'm going to sit and look at this for ages. So if you'd like to find out a little bit more about your own origins and about your family history, you can buy a DNA kit using the link below. And if you use the code on screen, you get free shipping as well. And as an added bonus, you can get a 30-day free trial of their best subscription for family history research. And then if you like it, you can get 50% off. Win. My Heritage is also committed to never sell or license any genetic data, making you the sole owner. Big old thank you to My Heritage for sponsoring this video and for confirming that we're Vikings. Should we go back to some plastic identification? I'm carrying an axe everywhere I go now. <laughs> so the last two we have to separate are LDPE and HDPE, and these are the trickiest ones because in terms of density, they're very similar. We know that they float in water. We know they sink in oil. Unfortunately, you can't mix these two because they just don't mix. So we have to find an alternative to the oil as something that they would sink in. And in this case, we're gonna use alcohol. This is ethanol, which is available from B&Q or any old hardware store. When you mix it together in a very specific ratio, you should get it right in the middle so that one will float and one will sink. This is a solution of 58% water to 42% ethanol by mass. So as you can see, we've got some of the LDP floating to the top, but some is still sunk to the bottom. It does, if you leave it for a while, it will maybe settle itself out. But to help it along, I'm gonna add a tiny bit more water and that should help just help it float to the top. Those are some methods of identifying the plastics that we use in our workshop. And there are some ways of identifying the other three. We don't really use them because we only work with these plastics, but that doesn't mean that you don't. So for complete thoroughness, we will show you anyway. So I've just chucked in a handful of those plastic types, ones, threes, and sixes, back into the water. They were the ones that sunk on that first test. And a good way of separating out the sixes, which is polystyrene, is by adding some salt. So I've got two liters of warmish water here. I've no idea how much salt we need. I'm just gonna keep adding tablespoons of it, and at the end, I'll pretend I knew what I was doing all along. Looking better. So you use eight tablespoons of uh, salt in water, in two liters of water, and then your polystyrene will float. So the only two that are left to identify are PVC and PET. Sadly, the flotation method doesn't actually work for these, um, but realistically, they, they've both got a pretty bad reputation for being able to safely recycle at home. So we'd say you're probably better off just focusing on the others. When doing research online, the main way that we can see that people say to identify between the two is through a burn test. So apparently they both have a very similar yellow flame when they're burnt. 
that PET smells a little bit sweeter or a little bit like vinegar, but PVC actually has a very distinct chlorine smell. But if you've seen our safety video, you'll know that we'll never advise you to burn any plastic. It can give off a ton of fumes that are both bad for you and the environment. So we'd just say, never do it. Oh, but now it works every single time. We had a bit where I walked off and then it didn't have any gas. And then I said, oh, we haven't got any gas anyway, but now it's working. Stupid Zippo. There you go. Give it back here. No, oh, we haven't got any gas. <laughs> if plastic identification really is your thing, we do have one more method that can not only distinguish the difference between these two, but a whole load of other plastics that might be of interest. Now, this little beauty is called the Plastel, and this uses something called near-infrared spectroscopy. We don't know what that is, so we're going to pretend we do just by saying it's infrared light that detects the different types of plastic based on their atomic structure. If you want to find out the full scientific spiel, we'll put a link to the Matoa website, which is the company that makes the Plastel, and that will tell you everything you need to know about how this works. So the way this works is you take your piece of plastic you want to identify, you pop it on the little scanner, and it will tell you what that piece of plastic is, if it can identify it, and how confident it is on the match of that piece of plastic compared to the library of things they have stored inside this little machine. So as well as a load of all the main categories of plastic that we've shown you, this can also identify loads of the types of plastic that all fall within that other category or that number seven in the recycling triangle. So this helps you identify way more than you can do with our methods that we've shown you in the video. So we keep our Plastel permanently ready to go, sat here next to our washing station. So anytime we're washing plastic and we need to work out what it is, we can do it straight away and then crack on and use it in our recycling project. Now, because we're dealing with infrared light here, anything with black pigment in it is gonna absorb all of that light and it's not gonna give you a clear reading. So most of the time it will come up as unknown. Now this isn't a huge problem for us because we don't work with a lot of black and we tend to keep everything nice and colorful. Similarly with HDP and LDPE, the densities, as we said earlier, are very similar. So the scanner is gonna struggle to determine between those two and it will come up generally with both of them as PE. Now what we tend to do is we tend to keep a small pot of our solution of this alcohol water mixture. If we ever have a lid that we're not sure which one it is of those two, we chuck it in there and that way we can easily determine what it is and carry on using it. Matoa have been kind enough to give anyone watching this video a 5% discount code. So if you want one for yourself, use code BROTHERSMAKE5 at their web store checkout. We'll put a link in the description below. Thanks Matoa. Right, so let's put these tests to the test and work out nice. what that was good, wasn't it? And work out what that damn cabbage lid was from earlier on. So as it's a lid, we do really know that it's either LDP, HDP, or polypropylene. Lids are always one of those three. But we're gonna pretend we don't know that and plop it in some water. If it floats, we're right. We're right. <laughs> Listen. We're good. There you go. So we've narrowed it down to a two or four or five. We're not complete idiots. <laughs> the next test, obviously, if you remember, is the oil. If it's polypropylene, it will float. If it's one of the polyethylenes, it will sink. Poker? Give it a poke. Didn't like that. Nope. That's called the thoroughness poke. <laughs> I don't know names are work in progress. Yeah. Don't publish that one. No. These are floating. There's no need for the third test to work out if it's LDP or HDP because we now know that is polypropylene. Well, we oh. think. We think it's probably properly. Should we double check? Because we've got our handy dandy little plans tail, we can check. I'll bring the camera over. Go on. Chuck it on there. And as you can see, 100% certainty that that is polypropylene. So uh, yeah, nice one. We can use it now. Once you've separated as much plastic as we have, you tend to start picking up on cues and you can kind of see what different plastics are just by looking and feeling them. For example, polypropylene tends to be much more shiny, whereas HDP and LDP tend to be more matte. Uh, the hardness is also different. LDP in particular is very flexible, whereas polypropylene is much more brittle. Another test you can do to actually determine whether a lid is a polypropylene one versus LDP or HDP is a smash test. You can give this a good old whack with a hammer. It's great for getting your frustration out on lids from companies that don't put marks on their plastic. And if it cracks or, sm or smashes into pieces, you know it's polypropylene, whereas if it bends or just flexes, it's gonna be polyethylene. Have you got to sign up to our Patreon? 
fast as I can do. That was very aggressive. It was a bit much. If you did want to join us on Patreon, you don't have to, but we have a lot of different tiers on there. We do. There's different perks. There are. You can get your name at the end of the video. You'll see that in a minute. You can get your name on the workshop wall. See that in a minute as well. See that in a minute. Yeah. Um, you can hang out with us on Zoom. Oh, yeah. Okay, I don't have to be. I'm, I'm usually there, but if you don't want me there, I won't. I can hide for a bit. That could be a new tier, actually, couldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no pressure. But if you do want to join, check it out. It might be something of interest. If you're one of the Brotherhood already, oh. thank you very much. You're a bunch of legends. Yeah, we love you. So for a video like this, we've done quite a lot of research outside of what we've actually shown you in I here. I did all of it. <laughs> Um, so we'll link you down to, in the description of the video, down to a load of the things we found useful. One of the main ones was the Precious Plastic website. They have charts and grids and stuff, and they've got lots of helpful stuff. And then, if you come across a lid like this, which is listed on the side as 05, which is poly polypropylene, by the way, but underneath it says PE, which is either two or four. So it's one of three different types of lids, all in one. We're gonna go throw it in oil and find out what it is. I know. It's, it's HTTP, I know it already. Oh, did you? <laughs> I worked it out. <laughs> Come on, thanks for watching the video. Cheers, guys. Making some chips. I'm not really making chips. <laughs>